Welcome to Electron Line, and now let's take a look at the four different kinds of transfer functions in a little bit more detail. The voltage gain, the current gain, the transfer impedance, and the transfer admittance. Remember that the general form of the transfer function is a numerator divided by a denominator. It's a ratio where both the numerator and the denominator are functions of the frequency, and the value of the transfer function is somewhere between 0 and 1. Now, the voltage gain is defined as the ratio of the output voltage divided by the input voltage. That's pretty straightforward, and we can understand that easily. We saw a couple of examples of that on the previous video. We have a similar kind of gain, in this case the current gain, where it's a ratio of the output current divided by the input current. Now, the other two are a little bit more difficult to understand. The transfer impedance and the transfer admittance. What are they? Well, it turns out that the transfer impedance is the ratio of an output voltage caused by an input current. In other words, the ratio of the output voltage in one mesh of the network to the input current in another mesh. Of course, understanding that we put then all other sor sources being set to zero so that we can have a pure relationship between the output voltage and the input current. The transfer admittance is the ratio of the output current to the input voltage. In other words, the ratio of the output current at one node in the network to the input voltage at another node. So we have the input voltage driving the circuit and we have then the resulting output current. Here we have an input current driving the circuit and we have an output voltage. Again, in both cases, all other sources are set to zero. So we have that pure relationship between the output and the input either the output voltage versus the input current or the output current versus the input voltage. And so now you can see how we do, do indeed have four different kinds of transfer functions and of course later on we'll show you videos on how to utilize those transfer functions under different circumstances. But by now we hope we have a fairly good understanding what a transfer function is and of course we can imagine there's many, many applications, especially in the case of filters, for example, where we only want certain voltages or currents to get through the circuit at particular frequencies and not at others. That's just one example of those. So stay tuned and we'll show you some more information about different transfer functions.